Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the Minor Prophets by delving into the book of Hosea today, our first Minor Prophet. We've taken uh, four days to give some background and introduction to the cultural, historical, and thematic um, um, underpinnings of the Minor Prophets and the, the, the themes that tie the Minor Prophets together. We're going to begin with the book of Hosea. This is a book I really, really love. It's difficult. It's hard. Um, but we, we see God bear his feelings to us in this book in a way, in a way that's unlike any other in all of the Bible. Um, it's, it's a difficult book because it's a book about divorce. On, on the list of stressors in life, uh, the number one stress is divorce. And divorce is a greater stress than death and loss of a job, than loss of health. Divorce is the worst of all. It is the dismemberment of a family, not the division, the dismemberment, the ripping apart. And that's what's being chronicled in, um, in the book of Hosea. Hosea says in the very uh, first verse, the word of the Lord, which came to Hosea, the son of Beeri, during the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the days of Jeroboam, that's Jeroboam II, by the way, uh, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Um, uh, his name is Hosea, which can also be um, Hoshea, or Joshua, or Yeshua, or Jesus. That's his name. God is salvation. It's that Hebrew name that we know so well that will be the name of God's own son. Um, he is prophesying during the 700s, uh, literally on the eve of destruction of the southern kingdom. They're going to be carried off into captivity, Assyrian captivity, beginning in 735 when Tiglath-Pileser takes, hauls off the, the tribe of Naphtali, takes that area to 721 when the capital city of Samaria is destroyed. And all the people that can travel or are worth taking as slaves are hauled off into ca Assyrian captivity and scattered to the four winds of the Assyrian kingdom. He's prophesying on, on the eve of this happening. But during the reign of Jeroboam II, uh, who was very powerful and, and, and uh, if not a good man, a successful ruler, they were experiencing a great deal of prosperity and uh, security. Uh, but that's going to fall apart really quickly. This is a book about adultery. It's a book about God's people not keeping their covenant with God in a variety of ways. There is in, there's the idolatry of it. Idolatry in running after foreign gods, and particularly the god Baal. And adultery is a particularly uh, appropriate um, image to use, not only because there was real adultery taking place, if God's people are God's spouse, so to speak, covenanted to him the way a husband is to a wife, um, then going after other gods is spiritual adultery uh, in a very real sense. But Baal is an, a fertility god. He is god of the rain, god of the storm. And in the Baal cult, which is a Canaanite cult, uh, in, in the Baal cult, Asherah is the earth, the wife, and Baal is the storm, the water. It's the water that fertilizes uh, the ground. And so you pursue Baal, if you're an agricultural people, for your prosperity. And Baal worship has been an issue all the way through the, you know, the, the history, uh, almost from the time um, of Solomon on, has been a real issue with the, with the children of Israel. Uh, this Canaanite fertility call. Um, and so there's that form of adultery. But there is also the adultery of seeking foreign alliances, of going to someone else for your protection, of trying to pay off Assyria so they don't invade you, of sending envoys to e Egypt and trying to make friends with Egypt so Egypt will protect you from Assyria should Assyria want to invade. Like that was ever going to happen because you're literally sitting on the Assyrian border if you're the Northern Kingdom. Um, yeah, but anyway, that kind of faithlessness is what's being talked about. And there is divorce. This is a book about divorce. 
uh, and it's permanent in a very real sense, there will not be a return of the exiles like there will be from the southern kingdom. But there is a glimmer of hope in two ways. One is God is not going to come in his wrath as sternly as he ought because his love is too great. He's going to describe that in chapter 11. We're going to look at chapter 11 in detail in a few days. Um, and, and also because there will be some trickling back of people. Anna of the tribe of Asher, which is a northern tribe, was there to receive Jesus in the temple when he was there taken as a baby to be dedicated. And it's such a wonderful moment because we see that the, the promise um, to, the, to, to, to Israel included all Israel somewhat, that all there, there wasn't the massive return the way there was among the southern tribes or even the existence uh, as there was among the southern tribes, the northern tribes were basically obliterated. They're not wandering around the steppes of Mongolia somewhere, you know, as the ten lost tribes. They didn't get on boats and become the mound builders in North America. It didn't happen. They just were culturally and ethnically obliterated by the Assyrians, except for some, a few who came back and were part of Israel again. Um, we're, we're used to in the prophets, uh, the prophets having to literally live out their prophecies, you know, um, to, to reenact what God's about to do in their own lives. Isaiah did this. Ezekiel did it many times. Um, Ezekiel wasn't allowed to grieve for his dead wife um, but because, because of uh, uh, him acting out. Um, God's grief at, at, at the judgment he's about to bring upon his people. Hosea, I think, is challenged most of all. Hosea is ordered to marry a prostitute, to have children by this prostitute, to be cuckolded by this prostitute, and then at some point to pay for his wife to have her back again, uh, this faithless wife that, that he was married to. There's no form to the book of Hosea, but the language is so powerful. Uh, it, it is, uh, it is uh, the text is as messy as divorce is messy. Uh, literally, literally, in a couple of ways. In the first place, the text itself, the actual text that we have, the Masoretic texts from the rabbis that we have from around 1000 AD, or the, um, the, 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 the Hebrew text, Dead Sea Scroll text that we have, closer to the time of Jesus. There's not one good text. The text itself is in a bad state. Um, but the, the actual writing is just messy. It's just full of emotions. Um, 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 Fran Leibowitz has got this great quote, spilling your guts is just as pleasant for the other person as it sounds. This is, is, is God spilling his guts and causing the prophet to spill his guts over the faithlessness of his people. We're going to get into that those first few chapters where he marries Gomer, the prostitute, and their marriage and their divorce tomorrow. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.